Jesus was a revolutionary. Now let me tell you what it, what it means. A revolutionary is a person who either actively participates in or advocates a revolution. Also, when used as an adjective, the term revolutionary refers to something that has a major sudden impact on society or on some aspect of human endeavors. So a revolution has has a major sudden impact on society. How many believe Jesus' coming was a major impact on society? A revolutionary is someone who supports abrupt, rapid, and drastic change. A revolutionary is someone who supports abrupt, rapid, and drastic change. Are you hearing me? And Jesus came at a time uh, uh, of Roman dominion uh, and uh, oppression and dared to talk about a pervasive influence that would come against all earthly powers. And he was announcing a revolution and he was looking for revolutionaries. How many of you hear that? That's why I went and found the 12. And that hasn't changed even till right now. For 2,000 years, it's still the same. I believe Jesus was an agent of change of culture, society, and everything about the world. How many of you hear that? And I believe that that's the kind of church that I got saved into. I got saved into a church that was not interested in religion, was not interested in sitting in a pew, was not interested in just fitting into society, but was here to impact society. That's why a guy like me could have handled staying in the church. Because really when I came in, I could not have handled a boring church. I could not have handled a a religious church. And I really couldn't handle fake, phony people. He shook the world. How is it on those days that were religious days, could he lay hands on people that were dead and bring them back to life? How could he take the cripple and make the blind to see? How is it possible that he could stand on the bow of a boat and say to the wave, peace be still, and the storm left? Even his own disciples said, what kind of man is this that can speak to the ocean and to the waves and say, peace, and they obey him? There was a revolution going on 50 years ago. Five young men, revolutionary thinking young men, stepped out of their comfort zone and their religious zone in the Ecuador's of the Amazon basin to reach the fearsome tribe known as the Uncas. Uncas. And these five men had reached uh, into this tribe and were showing them the love of Jesus when suddenly and brutally they were murdered. You know the story. It's a movie made of it called The End of the Spear. Their deaths were shocking, but even more astounding was how their families refused to allow this to just be another religious moment. They went in and lived amongst them and won them to Christ. Uh, And today they're known as the Wadoni Indians. And God has brought salvation to this whole group of tribe of people that were murdering people before. One of the missionaries, Jim Elliott, left a journal filled with spiritual insights. Here's a quote which he captured, uh, and the other four men sacrificed was four. He said, here it is. He is not not fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. He is not fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Wow. Wow. That's revolutionary thinking. See, Christianity today, saints, has come down to get a job, get a home, read my Bible, have five of them in the house, have a little loaf of bread that's made out of plastic with a little card on it so I can pull it up every morning and read that scripture. And so that when I need help, I can pray and he helps me, delivers me from all of my fears and overwhelms me with his grace and his love and I can call on his mercy and there he is all the time. That is true. 
But if that's the sum total of it, he should have taken you to heaven because you could have had all that benefit there. But he did all that and more so that you could live your life as a revolutionary, a person who believes the kingdom of God is more important than just coming to church. The difference between the two oxymoron paradoxes is that paradoxes may appear opposed to to common sense. Nevertheless, they're true. Listen what Jesus said. He used paradoxes often. He said, to find, you must lose. To be rich, you must be poor. To live, you must die. To be first, you must be last. To be honored, you must be humbled. Wow. Wow. Could America use a little of that today? Could America use men and women that go into the places of politics and places of leadership of the nation and practice some of these revolutionary kind of thinkings? Paul used a a paradoxical statement to describe the believers in the church in Macedonia in 2 Corinthians 8, 12. Out of the most severe trial, listen at it, out of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy And their extreme poverty welled up into rich generosity. I mean, is that paradoxical? Out of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy, and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. I don't know if you know the way of the kingdom is down. The way of the world is up. Rock City Church, saints, is a revolutionary church. That's what I want it to be. That's what I've believed it to be. That's how I want my life to end. I don't want to end my life after all these years of almost 37 years of being a Christian, or 38 years, I mean, almost as a Christian for 38 years. I I, I don't want to end my life sitting around with a group of people that all they complain about is who sat in whose pew or who looked at what somebody's uh, car and how nice it is and cool it is or some other junk. We wonder why America's in such trouble. It's because the church has left its roots of being like Jesus. You bring Jesus into this society today and bring him up to speed in all the dress and all the stuff, he would turn cities, Congress, and the rest upside down. Can you imagine having Jesus in your high school? Can you imagine having Jesus in your university when one of the great uh, minds uh, of emptiness stands up? and pontificates on the greatness uh, of how man came uh, from monkey and other things. And Jesus is in the classroom. Excuse me, sir. While he's working on you, he wants to work through you. And what we've done is we've said, no, but God wants to build institutions of training so we can go and sit and be worked on and polished uh, Wags on, wags off. Instead of that, we are supposed to have God working on us while we go and let God work through us. Because enough of humanity will still be there that people can relate. God may have started to change that person. Maybe he can change me too. How many of you understand, saints? This revolution takes radical life. See, nobody will pray because you don't want to lay your life down. You don't want to sacrifice. You don't want to really give something up. Saints, I'm not looking uh, to join uh, the social club of Christianity that is twice dead and plucked up, uh, but I want to be a part uh, of something that's alive, uh, something that's got a hold uh, of a living God uh, that smells like God, 